Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Matt, and today I'm going to be talking about the state of gaming on Linux in August 2020. Um, so the big thing here is gaming on Linux has always been a bit of a mixed bag. Typically, game makers don't target Linux due to it having a very small share of the entire PC market. And then people don't use Linux because they can't have their favorite games on it. It's kind of like the snowball effect. The largest change in Linux gaming has been the introduction of Proton by Valve over a year ago. For those who don't know, Proton is a compatibility layer to run Windows games on Linux created by Steam developer Valve. It uses Wine, which in and of itself is a way to run Windows applications on Linux, combined with many other patches and libraries. The most important one is the layer and library that converts Windows DirectX instructions to Vulkan, which is a native Linux API. Uh, this is a pretty big deal because most of the games on Linux, or uh, sorry, on Windows, use something called DirectX, which Microsoft provides as an API that helps it to access the GPU and some other hardware. Um, DirectX, obviously, being something Microsoft makes, uh, is not available in Linux. Um, Vulkan's kind of more of an open API, and so this layer kind of translates those Windows DirectX calls to Vulkan, which, like I said earlier, kind of runs natively on Linux. When Proton was released, only 27 games were confirmed by Valve to work. Now over 11,000 titles work as of the shooting of this video in August 2020, according to ProtonDB. That means that most games people enjoy now just work pretty much out of the box on Linux. How easy is it to set up Proton on Linux? Well, all you have to do is pretty much install Steam and you're off to the races with the Valve approved games. Um, if you want access to more than just the Valve approved games, you have to check a little box in Steam settings. If you are going to go this route, I would recommend checking ProtonDB before installing an unofficially supported game to see how playable it is and if there's any specific patches you should use for the game. Um, oftentimes a lot of games will just have a, something that you need to just throw in a little snippet of code into the launcher and it actually can drastically improve game performance depending. Um, but like I said, a lot of them out of the box really do run fantastic. Um, in terms of gaming performance, Proton does a really excellent job with this. It provides near Windows-like performance due in part to Wine. Wine stands for Wine is not an emulator and it really stays true to its name. Wine, rather than emulating Windows, directly translates the code to native Linux instructions. This tremendously cuts down on overhead, leading to a near native experience. In my testing, the performance was on par with what my hardware is meant to handle. I don't have the most expensive gaming machine, but what I do have is more than competent for what games I like to play. My specs are shown here, you know, a, a GTX 1050 ain't much, but it's honest work. So between games that support Linux natively and Proton, you get the best of both worlds. You get to run your favorite games in a free and open source environment. I believe this is why Linux market share has gone up over the past year or so. There are just so many advantages to Linux. Now don't get me wrong, Windows has its place and I even use it at work. You know, Windows is fine, but for my personal computing, I prefer not to deal with all the limitations of Windows and not even to mention all the telemetry Windows has. If you haven't given Linux a try because you're afraid of games compatibility, that excuse almost doesn't work anymore. Plus, distros like Ubuntu allow you to install Linux alongside Windows for a dual boot environment if that makes you more comfortable if you don't want to make the, the full switch. I personally am using Pop OS right now, which is an Ubuntu derivative in and of itself. If you guys want more videos on Linux, please drop a like and subscribe. I've got more computer and 3D printer videos coming up soon, so stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching, and take care.